people are delighted that there's a change. They've done all the easy popular things that they said they were going to do. Delighted that a new government have came in, uh, a new government with fresh ideas, with fresh impetus, and with a drive to actually make Scotland a more successful country. Now, after a year in office, they've got the difficult things to do. But when they came into office, they came in elected on a big manifesto of promises to different groups. And one by one, we are seeing these promises broken. Every, every week in the chamber, broken promises and whatever. But we've only been in the chamber for one year. So that we've had a very light year as far as legislation is concerned. So in terms of using the parliament to uh, bring forward their policy of independence, they haven't done very well. If other parties decide to vote down what we are proposing, then that's not really... Uh, we can't do much about that. Muzika <muchas> Laboristek urte erraza egin izana aurpegiratzen diete, baina ataka zailean daude, erreferenduma babestuko dutela esan baitute. Inkesten arabera, SNP izan da Eskoziako legebiltzarraren eskumenak ongien kudeatu dituena, eta herrialdearen subiranotasuna nahi dutenen kopurua gora doa etengabe. Last year, in the election year, 2007, we actually celebrated 300 years of the Treaty of Union between Scotland and England. And it's the most successful political uh, partnership uh, probably in the history of Europe, certainly, um, and if not the world. And for those 300 years, the people of Scotland have had the benefit of being part of the United Kingdom. Well, the population will, will actually uh, realise that um, it's normal to be independent, that we don't need to rely or, or the perception of relying upon uh, someone else. In Scotland, we certainly would argue that Scotland has had all the benefits of being part of the Union, which is why, personally, I am against independence. It's normal to take your own decisions. Um, it's normal to actually stand up for yourself. If you look across Europe, um, obviously Luxembourg, a population of half a million people, Liechtenstein, about 250,000 people, the Republic of Ireland, three and a half million people, uh, Denmark, 5 million. Finland, 5 million. Uh, there, are, there are many small, independent, or normal independent countries uh, within Europe, right next door to us. I'm not saying that Scotland couldn't be an independent country. Of course it could. If the people of Scotland decided that's what they want to do, then they can go and do it. And the uh, Westminster government has made it clear that if ever that happened, then that's what, the, that, that's what would have to happen. We've really got to get the message um, out to the population. We've got to talk to people uh, and prove to them that independence uh, is, uh, is the next logical step. Support for independence has always run at around 20 to 30 percent. It's up to us to prove that Scotland deserves to be independent and that Scotland should be independent. Um, I mean, that, yes, I mean, there will be people in Scotland who we just will, we will never convince. Uh, I know that. Um, but there are people out there who, uh, who would like it, but they're not really too sure. So we have to try and, uh, and convince them and explain to them the benefits uh, that independence will bring uh, to, the, to the electorate within Scotland. <laughs> Independentziaren proiektura komunitate ezberdinak erakarri asmo zari dira abertzaleak. Etorkinena izan liteke kasurik arrakastatxuena. Humza Jusafekin mintzatu gara, SNP-ko Asiar Eskoziarrak independentziaren alde adarreko burua. Glasgowen jaioa den arren, gurasoak etorkinak ditu. Be Scottish doesn't mean that you can't be Asian or you can't be Muslim. Whereas in some parts of Europe, if you want to be, you know, if you want to be a certain nationality, then it's very, very difficult to be, say you're also Asian or to say you're also Muslim. If you know in Scotland, the Asian community, 80% plus 
you know, 80 to 85 percent is Muslim. So a lot of the the factors that have kind of determined Labour's downfall have been their foreign policy. You know, uh, obviously the war in Iraq was very unpopular, a Muslim country. The war in Afghanistan was very unpopular, another Muslim country. All the anti-terror laws, they're seen as very a negative towards the Muslim community. So all these things SNP have been opposed to. They've been opposed to the war in Iraq. They said it's time to pull out of Afghanistan. And they've also said that the anti-terror laws um, are too strong and, and, and against civil liberties. I think if, that, if we continue to govern well, <clears throat> independence will continue to rise. People will see that it's not such a big change. We'll see, well, we've got control of health, crime, housing, education. Then there's no harm in having control over foreign affairs, defence and one or two other areas. Do you think Brown may try to stop the referendum? A good question. Um, uh, it certainly, obviously, with what's happened uh, with the, the Labour position, both the UK and the Scottish Labour position in recent weeks, uh, who knows what the position is going to be uh, in, uh, in two years' time? Uh, who knows what's going to happen? And I don't think he would do that. Um, I think, again, you know, he can't... The Westminster government have the ultimate responsibility for this because constitutional change lies with them. They can't stop the Scottish National Party from organising a referendum, but the referendum that would be organised from this Parliament would be for information purposes only. I think it's right to allow the Scottish people, well, to, to allow the electorate in Scotland, the choice of what they actually want. Um, dictating to them that uh, you're not getting a referendum because of X, Y, or Z, that, that's not the way ahead. Um, we, we have to allow the people in Scotland uh, the choice. They don't have the choice because of uh, some politician or a party preventing it from happening, then uh, uh, I'm sure that, that they will uh, suffer the consequences at the next election and the ballot box. They have always said that they would bring forward a referendum of the people in 2010. We have recently said, well, if that's your position, you've been in power for a year. This uncertainty is causing problems for business and industry here. We have leading business people saying, end the uncertainty, tell us what's going on. We want to have this question solved once and for all. So our argument was, well, why are you waiting until 2010? Have the referendum, uh, bring it forward now. <laughs> So I think the more people see that it's not going to be a huge change, you know, the sky's not going to collapse, uh, mountain, you know, volcanoes aren't going to erupt, it's just going to be uh, economically sensible. Uh, I think the more people begin to see that in the next coming years, uh, absolutely, independence will happen, I think, sooner rather than later. I think, I think I'll still be quite a young man when it happens. So uh, I'll have a lot of my life to enjoy independence, I hope, and independence God. With independent, support for independence running at around 25 to 30 percent, the case for staying within the union uh, would be won, and uh, the referendum uh, on independence would be defeated. And as Mr. Salmon has said, it's a, it's a once in a generation question. So hopefully that would uh, end the arguments about whether or not Scotland could be independent for the next 20 years. There are economic consequences to this. It might be fashionable to say, I want Scotland to be independent, but there's a price to be paid if you make the wrong decision. Do you think you would win the referendum? Yes. Uh, I am looking forward to the day when Scotland does become an independent nation. Uh, I'm looking forward to the day when, uh, uh, when we can actually stand up for ourselves and represent ourselves on the, on the international stage. And I'm looking forward to the day when Scotland becomes a normal country. <laughs> Ich 